Hello and welcome to the Heat Transfer Course Conduction. This course is brought to you by RWTH Aachen University and the University of Twente. My name is Wilko Rofs and in this video we will have a first introduction to the topic of convection and attractive heat transfer. The learning goals in this video are as follows. First of all, we will see what is convection and how the advection, conduction and convection are related to each other. Finally, we will see that a heat transfer coefficient is able to describe the entire mechanism of heat transfer in a fluid by an empirical correlation. Now, let's before we start with the topic of convection, see what conductions in liquids and gases is and how this works from the fundamental point of view. Here we have our solid material and in conduction heat is transferred by molecular collisions of neighboring or close um, really um, attached molecules. So the transfer is here linear from the bottom to the top and we see those different layers. Another mechanism for the transport or the transfer of energy is advection. Advection is the energy transferred by a directed motion of molecules in a liquid or a gas. So we can see this here in the image that colder fluid from the left side is brought by a motion towards the wall. Here it becomes heated up due to the heat transfer from the wall to the liquid and then the motion of the liquid will be in a sense that the hotter liquid is then transferred away from the wall. This mechanism, the transfer port of molecules in a directed way is called advection. Convection is the sum of advective motion and con uh, diffusive motion. Why is this the sum? So what do we have here? Of course, those molecules will be transferred through the wall by a fluid flow, but here close to the wall, the velocity of the molecules, if we see it strictly directly at the wall with the no slip boundary condition, there's no movement of the molecules, or at least the movement becomes lower and lower until it reaches the wall. And so close to the wall, we still have a massive influence of conduction. And as such, the convective heat transfer describes the entire process from heat being transferred from the solid into the liquid. And this then not only by the advective motion, but also by the conduction in the boundary layer. Now I would like to compare two different cases one stable and one unstable case. So for this, we have here a hot wall on the top and a cold wall on the uh, bottom. And between these two walls, there is a fluid. It can be a liquid or it can be a gas, does not really matter. On the other side, we have just switched the positions of the plates. So on the bottom side, we have a hot plate. On the cold side, on the top side, we have a cold plate. Now, the question is, under which conditions do we have a better heat transfer from the hot side to the cold side? And what will affect the heat transfer? So let's first look on the left side, on this case where we have the hot plate on the top and the cold plate on the bottom. And a very good example for this here is a hot water tank that you probably know from your home um, insulation. So we have um, hot water here on the top and cold water on the bottom. So here we feed the cold water and then it will get heated up and on the top part you can remove the hot water. The interesting part is that in this here there's no intermixing between the two compartments or between the colder and the hotter fluid because owing to the lighter weight of the hot fluid this will be stable laying on top of the cold fluid. So a very short uh, summary here. Uh, due to the lower density of the warm liquid, 
a stable stratification layer is created. Warm fluid remains at the top and the cold fluid remains at the bottom. You see, a motion of liquid does not occur and as such the heat transport downwards is only by heat conduction. The temperature profile in this case is a pure conduction profile. Um, let's assume steady state conditions and here then we see this straight line between the top and the upper temperature. Now let's switch this. The lower plate is hot, the upper plate is cold. We have this or we can see this in an everyday example, for instance a water kettle. The water kettle works in the same way. We have here on the bottom um, a heater, so the temperature on the bottom side is warm and there is of course not a cooler on this top side, but let's um, have a closer look what happens. So we all know that uh, the water in this water kettle will get into motion. The warm molecules are lighter than the cold ones, so they will rise up. Colder liquid is going down and as such we have a natural movement of the liquid inside uh, this water kettle. And as such this mechanism is also called natural convection, but we will go into this in a more detailed way in the convection lectures. Now there is a very famous instability called Rayleigh-Bernard convection. And this is actually the case where we have the hotter plate on the bottom and the colder plate on the top. And due to this heating, this unstable motion, we have uh, this induced fluid motion. And as such, the heat is transported not only by conduction from the hot part to the cold plate, but also by an advective motion, a global motion of the liquid from the hotter part to the colder part and vice versa. The cold liquid, of course, will then fall down and this will bring colder liquid towards the hot plate. Here a little video of how Rayleigh-Bernard convection can look like. The surface that you can see is an isothermal surface, so it shows where the temperature is, uh, uh, an I uh, identical temperature is reached and the color gives the velocity of the liquid. And you can see that there are a lot of vortices and fluid motion induced by this hotter part on the top and a colder part on the top and sorry, hotter part on the bottom. Let us now have a look on the temperature profile in the case of Rayleigh-Bernard convection. We have drawn this profile here now with a S-shaped like, like curve between the upper plate and the lower plate. Why is this curve shaped as it is? So first of all, let's have a look at the center location. Here, the temperature gradient is very small compared to the outer parts. The reason for that is that in the center part the motion of the molecules or the advection has a dominant effect. So there's not needed to have a high temperature gradient to transport the heat because the fluid motion is doing that. If we come closer to the wall the movement of the molecules becomes less and less. As we know from the fluid dynamics lectures that here directly at the wall the no slip boundary condition will yield that the fluid motion is zero. As such the temperature or the heat can only be transferred through this boundary layer by a conductive mechanism. And as such here the entire heat that is transferred from the bottom part to the top part is on the wall, on the upper wall and also on the lower wall transferred by heat conduction. And so we also see that because the fluid has a homogeneous thermal conductivity, 
in steady state, the temperature gradient here is equal to the temperature gradient on the other side because the heat that is entering the liquid needs also on the other side exiting the liquid. Now, how does the temperature profile compare now to a temperature profile of if we would have pure conduction? So this straight line, we see that the gradient here is much steeper and as such more heat is transported. So the overall heat transport can directly be seen by the gradient close to the wall and the respective thermal conductivity of the fluid. How can we now describe the heat transferred by convection? So this can be quite complicated and we will have a lot of uh, detailed discussions on that in the convection lectures, but there's also a simple engineering approach to transfer the calculate the heat transferred from the um, by advective motion and conductive motion. And this is simply by linearizing the heat transport and relating this to the temperature difference between the wall temperature and the temperature at the infinity, at the reference temperature. And this linearization is done by introducing here the heat transfer coefficient alpha. So we just say that the heat transferred through the uh, by the area A, so the heat Q, is equal to some kind of constant times the difference, the driving potential from the wall temperature to the temperature in the infinity or to a so-called reference temperature. Now this alpha is can be an empirical co um, coefficient that is determined by experiments where the heat transferred is measured, the temperatures are measured and then rearranging the equation alpha can be calculated. Now these are the important quantities so let's summarize we have the heat Q which is then transferred over an area A. So that's the area for convective transport by a driving temperature potential, Tw minus T infinity. And the connection between those values is the heat transfer coefficient. Now, let me summarize this video. So what is convection and how can it be described empirically? So convection is the entire transport of heat from, let's say, a wall or a solid to, into a liquid or between two solids over a liquid by the motion of the liquid and the conduction that take both processes taking place at the same time. What is the shape of the temperature profile close to the wall on the fluid side due to convection? So now for that, we have to look into the fluid dynamics lectures and we see that at the wall there is a no slip boundary condition, which means that the fluid close to the wall does not move. And because the fluid does not move, the heat can only be transferred through this boundary layer by the process of conduction. And as such, there's a steep profile or steep um, gradient, temperature gradient, close to the wall. And the further we move away from the wall, the more the liquid will be able to move, the more heat is also transferred by the process of advection. And as such, the temperature gradient decreases if we move further away from the wall. Finally, what is the meaning of the heat transfer coefficient? We can see the heat transfer coefficient in a first sense as an empirical correlation that describes the heat transferred from an object into a liquid, Q, by the temperature difference, so the driving potential and the area. In this sense, we can utilize empirical values of a heat transfer coefficient to determine the heat that is transferred by convection. Important is here that the heat transfer coefficient assumes a linearization of the process. So if we increase the temperature potential by a factor of two, 
the heat that is transferred increases also by a factor of two. Uh, this is not always the case, so we can think of a lot of examples where heat might be transferred much in a much uh, intense way if we increase the temperature difference. This is, for instance, the case by, in, by rayleigh banal convection, where the driving temperature potential will also increase the fluid motion because the fluid gets hotter and there's uh, the velocity is then increased. So this empiric correlation is important to be checked whether it's valid and also whether the temperature range is um, uh, well chosen. So be careful if you use the heat transfer coefficient, but this will be also discussed in the other lecture, in the convection lecture next time. Thank you very much for your attention and see you soon.